On Monday, just a couple of days ago, June 15th, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the 1964 Landmark Civil Rights Act protects now, according to their ruling, those who identify themselves sexually as part of the LGBTQXYZ movement. Now, they didn't say the XYZ, but they did say the LGBTQ movement. And to protect them, they say, from job discrimination by adding in the protection that this act, 1964 Act, now encompasses bias against LGBTQ or otherwise identified workers. Does this action by the Supreme Court of the United States make them guilty once again of violating the Constitution by, in effect, making law? And if so, does that not ensure that there is not justice for all, but in fact, place the law they place themselves above the law that they're sworn to uphold? We're going to talk to David New right now. David, you were listening to the last segment with Representative Metcalf here, but I'm glad that you are on board now to talk about this momentous issue here. So nice to be with you. This is a very, very bad case. It's very bad for the American family. It's very bad for children. Whenever the gay, uh, lesbian agenda is promoted and encouraged and supported, you basically damage American families, and it really damages children. This case basically took the 1964 Civil Rights Act, one of the greatest pieces of law that has ever been passed, and it basically says that there are five groups of people that you cannot discriminate against. This was a wonderful law, Title VII, and it covers five groups of people. It says you cannot discriminate based upon race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Those are the five things. Now, in 1964, when they used the word sex, nobody on this planet thought it referred to gay sex. They admit, even in the case, here's how Gorsuch, this is, this is the other horrible thing about this case, is that Justice Gorsuch wrote this decision and he voted with the majority. And this is, he, he turned. He is now the join the ranks of the Kagans, the Sotomayors, and the Ginsburg, and all these people who think that the, the Constitution is a novel from Alice in Wonderland where words can take all different kinds of meanings. And this is what he says. He says, those who adopted the Civil Rights Act might not have anticipated their work would lead to this particular result. Oh, really? Then he goes on to say, this court normally interprets a statute in accord with the ordinary public meaning of its terms at the time of its enactment. But you see, he dropped all that, and he went retrospectively and said that the word sex there refers to gay sex. It refers to transgendered. It refers to all kinds of things that nobody in 1964 would have thought. And, of course, what has been pointed out by the dissenting people for the last 45 years, Congress has tried to add the term sexual orientation to the Title VII Act. So it would now have a sixth uh, category. Well, they haven't succeeded. Just to give you an example of what he has done with the word sex, Justice Gorsuch, who is supposed to be somebody with a very level head. Take the preamble to the U.S. Constitution. Look at the first three words. We the people of the United States. We the people. Now, supposing a left-wing person comes up who wants to have all those illegal aliens in the United States to say they should be allowed to vote for president at the next election. We allowed them to vote in local elections in San Francisco and some other cities. Why can't these people vote for president? It doesn't matter whether they're here legally or illegally. And they say to you, now, David, it says we the people. 
are illegal aliens people? And I'd have to say yes. They said, well, why doesn't it include them to vote for president? Or supposing I was a person, the, one of these no-border people who don't believe in national borders at all, and it says, we the people of the United States. Well, David, is it Canada? I'm part of America. Is it uh, uh, Central America, South America, North America? We're all Americans. Isn't that right? So why, and we're all states in this whole continent here. We're all states. And it says United States. Aren't we united together all in this continent? That is how crazy what Gorsuch has done. That's what he's done to the language. And that's how bad this decision is. Mm. There's no telling what this man will do in the future. It's all open season on the language, English language. He can do anything because that's what the other people, the sweethearts, Kagan and Sotomayor do with language. It's incredible, Dave. Gary, I know you've got a question here that we were concerned about how this may apply to churches and all. Yeah, I was wondering about that because I've heard different people on the television, and I'm not going to mention any names right now, but there are some who say this won't affect churches simply because of the fact that it is designed to be directed towards businesses. I don't believe that. I think it's going to have a terrible effect on churches down the road. And so I'd like for you to comment on that, if you would, please, David. Uh, Gors Justice Gorsuch, and, you know, I was so proud of this man when he got on the Supreme Court, him and Kavanaugh, and I was hoping, hoping, and I'm still hoping for the president to be reelected to nominate more people, well, <laughs> like Kavanaugh. Now, in Gorsuch, his opinion, he does talk about what you just talked about. And he talked about what's called the Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993. And he is saying, I'll read you what it says, because of RFRA, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, operates as a kind of super statute displacing the normal operation of other federal laws, it might supersede Title VII in appropriate cases. What he's saying is, even though we're taking this phrase sex, and we're now applying it to gay sex and lesbianism and boys who like to shave their legs and all that kind of stuff and girls who want to wear pants and think they're butches, even though that may be true in Title VII, they're all protected in their jobs, it may not apply to religious institutions. And that's why he says inappropriate cases. So he is giving, shall we say, an indication that he sees an exemption for religion in this ruling that he has given today. But it's a very, very bad ruling. The only thing worse than this ruling is when they first decriminalized homosexuality and when they made homosexuality uh, marriage uh, uh, protected right under the 14th Amendment. This is very bad. It's in that class of acts because it basically is an attack upon Christianity. It's an attack upon Christian values and morals that this country was founded upon. And David, in the last couple of seconds here, really in reality is not what I established at the kind of beginning. Here are Supreme Court justice again taking liberty and usurping what is the lawful action of Congress, and therefore, did he and all of those six individuals, in reality, not violate their constitutional oath when they did this ruling? Yes, because any fact what they're saying is they are the Constitution. As Justice Alito said, and he was joined by Thomas as dissenting, this is what he says. There is only one word for what the court has done today, legislation. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, and that is the point here. When the judiciary or any branch violates the highest civil law, and in this case by the Supreme Court, God's moral law, justice falls. That's not justice. You can't have it if freedom is to remain.